It's an exciting day for me here at the house because a few weeks ago we captured a swarm of bees that showed up on one of my clients' uh, projects and uh, we weren't sure if they were going to make it. They were in pretty sad shape. So we captured them in what we call a nook box, which is a little temporary small sized hive box. We brought them home and they have thrived. So we're thrilled. And today is the day that they get transplanted from their little temporary box into their hive super, uh, which is their deep hive box that is going to be their permanent home, or at least the basis for their permanent home. So we're all suited up. I'm all nerded out in bee uh, wear, and uh, we're going to go out into the garden now. And uh, we thought, since you guys were really kind of digging on the bee stuff, that uh, we would tape this so you could see what it's like to uh, move an entire small young hive of bees from their temporary home into their permanent one. Let's go. This is where the girls are hanging out right now. It's just big enough to hold the essential core of a young hive of bees. So we put the swarm in here a few weeks ago, and as you can see, they're busy moving in and out, uh, sending out scouts and foragers for honey and for pollen, and things are going well. Now, that was the last time I checked. You never know what you're gonna find when you open up a beehive, so that's why we keep bees. Uh, we keep tabs on them. So that's the temporary box just sitting here on this sawhorse. This is their new permanent hive box, which is actually an old hive box that I sanded down and scraped out some of the old honeycomb and uh, propolis, that's kind of their caulking compound. Got it all sanded, got it tuned up, fixed the cracks, glued the bottom back on, and then gave it a new paint job. This is a post, uh, pressure treated lumber, so uh, moisture is never gonna affect it. The reason I've got it sitting on one leg as opposed to the temporary thing, there's a massive ant colony underneath my property. I actually lost my last hive of 10 years to ants while we were away on vacation. So <clears throat> this is to minimize their ability to climb up into the hive box. So they'll have to climb up this post and then they hit this disc. Now, can they overcome this disc? Absolutely they can, but not after I put on the whole underside of this disc a thick layer of tanglefoot, which is carnauba wax. It's just a goopy surface. Sometimes people use uh, engine grease to do the same thing. And uh, basically, if ants try and climb up here, they have to climb over the bottom of the disc and they get stuck. And so it provides kind of a moat. And why is it tipped instead of just perfectly flat? Because I never want to provide landing spaces around my hive for anybody who is not a bee. So uh, birds don't have an opportunity to sit here and uh, pick off my gals as they come back to the hive uh, or any other little fuzzy creatures. So uh, I keep it sloped, water drains off it, and it's not a super easy landing space for anything else. And so what we're gonna find when we open this up is that there are five frames. There's a beeswax foundation on the frame and they have gone ahead and drawn out, and uh, which means making honeycomb all over both sides of their five frames. These are empty frames, and we're gonna provide them as room for expansion. So when I move these girls over, we're gonna move frame by frame. We're gonna keep them in the exact same order that they are in that box because they've got a system going, and we don't wanna disturb that. We're gonna put them right here in the center so that everything stays normal for them. They're just gonna have more room to expand out and eventually they'll expand up. And by the time our hive gets up here with a couple of medium supers on the top, it'll be honey time. Got our smoker. Our smoker just has uh, some burlap inside that's smoldering. We don't want heat on the bees, just a little bit of cool smoke. And people always ask me, what does smoke make bees calm? Well, yes and no. Uh, it actually freaks them out, uh, but Bees communicate with pheromone signals back and forth, and when you smoke out a hive, run a little smoke in there, it tends to block the signals. And since the hive is really a superorganism, a single mind, by blocking the signals in, in between the individual bees, we're kind of freezing them all to a certain degree. They kind of panic when they lose connection with the rest of the hive, and uh, they tend to just kind of stay put. You can hear them react in there with buzzes.
some drones up here. Let's see what we got. There's the hive tool. This honeycomb has been attached to the side of the box, so it's sticking as it comes out. So, lost a little comb here, but we can see down inside these cells, this is new comb that's being made. We got pollen being stored, beginning of honey on this frame. Lots of pollen and honey. Here we've got capped cells. Now these capped cells here, these are brood cells. These are capped, and if you look inside, you can see tiny little bee worms in there. Lots of brood. This one's gonna move over. A lot of brood. All those caps. That means the queen, she is a laying. She's building up the size of this hive, and it's good timing for us. Good. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna bring them both together because we're not gonna harvest these anyway. There's your more standard natural honeycomb. Exactly. So. All right, so we've moved all five frames over. We've got a lot of girls clinging to the inside of the box. They can make the most of their new digs. You don't want to expand a beehive space too rapidly because they like to be able to control the temperature, the airflow, control the environment. me out. Nice and gentle. Give him a second to get out of the way so we're not squishing anybody. And there we go. They are in their new home. Of course, the queen is inside here now. And it won't be long before some workers come out here, start fanning pheromones out, basically signaling to everybody. She's in here, and in about an hour or two, all of these bees uh, will have abandoned this old box, and they will be where they belong with their queen. So all in all, a successful move. I didn't like the fact that we had some cross comb where the honeycomb had actually went from one frame to the other, which I had to separate a little bit initially, and then I just decided, well, I'm going to keep these together because that's not where we're going to be harvesting anyway. But, you know, nature does what it does, so I'm of the mindset to kind of leave things as they are and do minimal uh, invasive damage to a hive that's thriving as is. As the hive develops and fills out this entire box, then we're going to put an additional extension on the top, which we call a super. It's going to be a little medium super. I'm going to let them grow the hive into that as well. Then we're going to put a screen across that called a queen excluder. The queen is bigger than the other bees, so the worker bees can get through the queen excluder, but the queen can't. She is excluded. And we'll put another super on top of that. The bees, since the queen can't get up there to lay uh, eggs in those cells, they will just store honey up there. And that is the box near the end of the year uh, when we will start looking at it and uh, occasionally raiding it for uh, taking honey. We won't be taking anything from their core home. They have what they have uh, and need what they need to survive. We'll just be taking some excess jars from the pantry. I was also happy to see there's no evidence of uh, wax moth or mites in this hive, so I'm thrilled. And the other thing I'm thrilled about is that this is not an Africanized hive. Now, how can I tell? Well, you might think, look, there are bees flying all around. Uh, they're really pissed off. Well, they're not really pissed off. They're confused, they're disoriented. And here's how you can tell. If you take a look at me, ask the question, how many bees are actually landing on me, attacking me? The answer is, uh, I don't see any. And the truth of the matter is, they're trying to get their bearings because I just moved their home. It's very disorienting. Um, but they're not so concerned about me. And so I'm thrilled. No mites, 
No moths, a little cross comb, we'll get over that, and no African bees here. So it looks like we've got a healthy hive and I'm excited about the future. Next video will be in a few months from now. We'll get in here, we'll see how things are developing. Until then, see you next week.